Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. I'm David Waybright, here with Jeremy Salinas, today to talk about Railroad Revolution. This was a big one that came out of Essen, and we tried really hard to get this copy, didn't we? We did. As no surprise here if you guys watch our show already. This was on my top ten list yeah. of last year. It's a really, really solid game. I'm liking a lot of the stuff that comes out of this publisher, What's Your Game? Yeah, almost every single <laughs> yeah, game. This is, this is really cool. This is a Euro game. It's based around trains. However, it is a worker placement with kind of a cool little unique twist in that you're not competing for worker spots on the board, because you you have your own board that you place your workers on, meaning that you can do those actions anytime you want. Yeah. And not only that, but you can place workers on the same action over and over and over again. Yeah, and you're also building up your workforce. Yeah. It reminded me in that way a little bit of Orleans or Orleans, where you're, bit, yeah. it just doesn't have the bag full of stuff, but you have these different types of workers and you're using them on your own little tableau. So, yeah, each player has their player board in front of them, and on the player board you have a couple different sections. Uh, the top, you have all of your train stations. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone starts with the same number of train stations. You have railroads, and you see that they're kind of in columns. Uh, that's important in a moment when we start talking about how they're placed onto the board. And then you have these four different actions. Right. And each of these actions can be taken as many times on your turn or... As, as you have workers. As you have workers, right. Um, there's station action, which allows you to place stations onto the board, depending if your railroad hit those lines that you're right. going to. You have railroads, which allow you to take the railroads off your board and place them on the board. There's a spot that allows you to interact with the Western Union portion at the bottom. And then there is a place that allows you to actually sell off your railroads and your stations in order to get money. Right. And that, that, that value depends, too, like you said earlier, on those columns where you, wherever you're at in the game. So we'll talk about how to use these actions in a moment. Let's talk about the board. The board itself is broken up into uh, just basically train stations across the United States. Yeah. Each of the players is going to start with rail lines, which we forgot to put out, but they're going to start with rail lines here uh, that connect to both Charlotte and Washington, right? So they're going to be all spreading out from that same location, trying to get across the United States to the western yep, portion. Yep, going west. And each of these train stations is numbered. So you have ones, twos, threes, fours, and then eventually fives. These are all randomly organized because each of these tiles is movable. Um, and then each of these stations allow you to get unique abilities if you're the first person to build on those areas, but also ability if you're just build exactly. something on there if you're not the first. There's a standard ability, but it, this game rewards those who are first quite a bit, actually. Right. Uh, there's no scoring track which is kind of unique. Scoring is done at the end of the game on a scoring pad. However, on the left-hand side, there is a meter that will be a uh, basically a multiplier yeah. for the three different scoring methods in the game, which are the stations that you place on the board, the rail routes that you build, and then the Western Union. Yeah, and like any there. good Euro, it's nearly impossible to max out all three of those. Yeah. You really got to pick your battles and, and go heavy in one, maybe two, right. and then get a little bit going in the third if you can. On the bottom uh, right-hand section of the board is a place for these large, thick tiles, which where you'll be enacting with specific people uh, to do deals. Yeah. Um, deals will allow you to do like one-time abilities by turning in shares that you get in the game. Now, this is cool. The game has money, and the game has shares. All the money is in denominations of 100. The shares are in denominations of 150. Shares can be used at any time, just like right. money, right? But they're also used very specifically to nor in order to enact deals. Yeah, exactly. The shares, basically, shares are money, but money aren't shares. Right. So the shares have an extra ability when you're doing these deals. Yeah. And the deals come up not in a very natural way. They, they there's, there's certain spots on the board they can activate deals, so it's right. not something that happens all of the time. It's really up to the player to make those happen. And it's really cool, too. When deals are enacted, the player that enacts the deals can do both of the line items on that deal. However, everyone else on the board can also take one of yeah, those pick actions. pick one of just, the two. Just one of the two, right. Each player gets to choose, uh, in reverse turn order, one of these start tiles. They allow mm -hmm. you to either place a train station on the board, maybe lay some early tracks, but you also get a unique worker. This is another important portion of the game. Each player will oh, start yeah. with four of these... Uh, white workers. These are kind of generic workers. They don't have any special abilities, but they can be used anywhere on the board. There are four other different kind of workers, and they're like accountants and... Accountants, engineers, mm. negotiators, and I can't Something remember the like, last one. Uh, on the board itself, it tells you what they do. So, 
When you enact these abilities that we previously talked about, like laying train tracks or laying stations, if you use a particular type of worker on these, they allow you to either get a discount or get an additional benefit from going to those locations. Yeah, and those those, those roles that we were trying to remember just now thematically work with that. So if you're laying railroad tracks, the engineer, mm-hmm. if you use it there, his bonus action it allows you to do that more efficiently right. or cheaper, things like that. The uh, negotiator, obviously, when you're doing things, that's going to open up more opportunity on the deals or right. uh, or more flexibility with those things. Each player is also going to start with, uh, what are these called again? Milestones. Milestones, that's right. Two milestones. On the back sides, they're labeled A1 and A2. Um, however, there are things you're trying to do in the course of the game, either building on mountain areas. Right. Uh, Connecting to certain areas yeah, all, on the board, all like various level things, or having, level certain, having certain having uh, certain stations and certain types of locations, yeah, all sorts of different uh, things you can achieve in the game in different combinations on those things for some pretty big points. Right. And there's three different or four different types. There's the A levels, and they go all the way down to the D levels. When you complete an A level, you can choose two from the B level, pick one of them, throw the other one underneath and so forth. Um, Now, each of these also requires you to have a guy on here to manage that that particular tile. When that happens, it flips over and you get to do what it says. That means that the person that you put on that tile is ejected from the game, so you will no longer have that worker available to you. Exactly. So you can have those out for a while. You just want to make sure you get them done. I mean, you can have the, the qualifications done, but you need to get that worker on there before the end of the game so that you can score those points. There's really, I found, not a huge rush to get that worker over there because, mm-hmm. of course, if you're having to put a turquoise worker over there, then you don't have a turquoise worker to use. So right. you just want to make sure and get it done before the end of the game. One of the actions you can take any time during your turn is to spend $800 to buy a new worker, any worker that you wish from the pool. Uh, so that kind of helps you speed up the, the process if you're collecting a large amount right. of money. And that's that's a fair amount of money in yeah. the game to spend yeah, on that. but. To be able to choose any colored worker is also pretty significant some, when you need them. There's some pretty cool engines in the game. In, engines in the game in order to build mass, yeah. uh, massive amounts of money. So let's talk about very briefly the four actions. I know we mentioned them. We, yeah. we went over them very quickly. But let's talk about how they actually play into the game. So if you go to the station, you get to enact and put a station on there, and you get to take the ability of that area. You're trying to spread out. Why are you trying to spread out in order to get your milestones? Obviously. And the stations that you pick, first of all, you have to take this, the leftmost station from your player That's board. That's right. And the stations have to connect to railroads that you've laid. Right. So you can't just place a station in San Francisco. Right. So you kind of have to do a little bit of everything to sort of work your way across the board. So you'll have to have laid track uh, and then place a station in sort of one of the uh, two areas, yeah. then in the threes, then in the fours. And there's no blocking in the game, which is kind of cool. There's areas in each of these squares to have all four players have right. a station or have uh, rail, uh, rail lines in there. That's the second action, laying actual railroads. In order to uh, lay railroads, you have to spend $400. You get to lay two of your railroads. Again, they have to come from the leftmost portion of your board. Right. And you have to pay an additional $100 per mountain in the region. So if you build on this area right here, that's not only $400, but another $300. Exactly. Because there's three mountains in there. Uh, mountains are important. Uh, they usually lead to better areas, lead to deals, but they also are important because some of your milestones require you to build on mountain tiles. Exactly. And like we were saying earlier, the different workers, just to give you a flavor for how that works... The engineer, for example, normally it costs 400 plus, like Jeremy said, another 300 to build on that mountain range. Yeah. If you used an engineer, it's only $100 and $50 for yeah. every mountain. Yeah. So big savings there if you're able to use an engineer. Yeah. I mean, generally, you're going to want to try to use the different colored workers in their respective area of expertise right. whenever possible. And the reason why you want to expand out and build stations is because a lot of these tiles give you additional workers. Some of them will give you blue workers or yellow right. workers. So you're wanting to expand out because you're not wanting to spend $800 to buy a worker. You want to earn them from the areas that you, that you visit. And as you get more of these <coughs> milestones... You know, the first couple you start out with are just ones and twos. Yeah. Some of these require two different colored workers. That's right. 
Uh, as we mentioned at the very beginning, there's shares and then there's money. One of the actions is going to the Western Union. The Western Union it works like this. When you go to the Western Union, you get to collect shares on every single one of these spots at the bottom of the board. They give you a certain amount of shares for going there. If you go there first before anyone else and build a station there, you get more shares, right. basically. The other cool portion about these, there's two things that are cool about them. One is that most of these areas have tiles on them. Uh, these are randomly placed at the beginning of the board, but they also allow you to take a unique ability by ejecting a worker from the game and enacting that ability. The other cool thing it does is every time you build a station in one of these areas, of course, you put your station in that area. At the end of the game, this works kind of like Great Western Trail. Right. When you have stations in two areas that are next to each other, you look at the victory points up here, and you get those victory points at the end of the game. Yeah, so there's some key areas. You know, you get these two spaces, it's eight points, and then yeah. there's the other ones are fives. Mm-hmm. So I think our first game that we played this, I'd put a bunch down here, but I mistakenly, you them. Yeah. I mistakenly didn't connect them just so, so that I missed out on most of the eight-point uh, spots there. Right. And then the last one, as we said, is actually selling things. You're going to need money in this game. Money can become tight if you're not building a very good engine. You can physically sell some of your railroads off. You're always going to sell from the leftmost available column. So if you see in my board, I'm not sure if you guys can see it or not, I have a railroad here. You sell one of them for $400, and it's whatever it right. says above. Um, you also get to do a unique ability. We haven't talked about this. Trains. Everyone's going to start with a train at the beginning of the game, and there's simply a tile. Um, this train that I have that everyone starts with allows you to take one of your workers and put it on one of your milestones. Yeah, and I, when you do, when you activate the train, it you're flips. flipping it over, mm-hmm. and then you can't use that ability again until you flip it over again. Right. So there's different things in the game that allow you to flip a train. Right. So not only do you get to flip it once, but you have to fi- effectively flip it twice <laughs> to use it. And there's four different kinds of trains besides the starting train. Some that give you money, some that allow you to move up your multipliers right. in the course of the game. The other cool portion is, at the end of the game, those trains are worth victory points for you, but only if they're flipped up face up. Right. So anything you've used for the course and not flipped back to its original side, you get nothing for it. Yes, you've used the ability, but you've negated the victory points and that it, you could have gained from it. It is very easy to lose track of that, too, because if you've got a <coughs> yes, few trains and you've used them, because you can reuse the trains. You can flip it, flip it again, flip it, flip it again. Yeah. But if at the end of the game you've used those things and then the game ends and you've got three trains that are all face down, that's what, 24 points you're missing out on. Right. So this is kind of a point salad game. Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, you're, you're scoring your victory points for your multipliers for those three areas that you can place things on the board. The milestones can be worth a ton of victory points. Even your starting ones are worth 18 victory points. But by the time you get to the last ones, we're looking at 42 points for trying to complete some of these yeah. these D ones, if you can get there. Those D milestones are pretty significant, and it is kind of challenging to get there. They're hard. You have to be very focused into doing that from the beginning Absolutely. of the game. And I said this during my top 10. I, this is the kind of game that you have to go in knowing what you want to do. Yeah. It's very hard to change directions. Yes, you can score points on just about anything, but in order to score a lot of points, you have to be focused into doing what you're trying to do. For instance, one of the multipliers on here is for having train uh, uh, stations or tracks hitting each of these five different areas. There's only three of them. But if you're maxed out there, there were 25 points each. So you That's... can score 75 points from doing that. But it's not easy. You have to you have to really focus in on getting through those mountain tiles, having the money in order to plow through those areas. Exactly. And not only, I mean, it can be really disappointing if you've spent a lot of the game increasing that scale all the way up to the top, but then not having put in the time and effort to reach these things. It makes that entire column worthless. Sure. I mean, you can waste the first few turns saying, I'm going to go the Western Union route, and then people start going there, and you're figuring out that that bonus has already been taken, yeah. right? So now I've wasted two of my plus threes. I should have gone somewhere else. So as I said at the very beginning, you really need to kind of focus in. Having said that, I love this game. Oh, it's I, I put it on my top excellent. ten for a reason. It's really, really cool. Had I gotten more plays in it, it might have hit mine. We, I barely, I think I just got one in you before one we in. were filming yeah. that. Um, but yes, it is an excellent, excellent game. Like you said, these guys are really hitting it well yeah. these days. Yeah. So guys, that is Railroad Revolution from What's Your Game. Make sure you guys subscribe to us, please. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, make comments below, and check us out next time on Man vs. Meeple. Bye-bye. Season 1 of Man vs. Meeple is sponsored by TMG Games, publisher of great games like Yokohama, Guilds of London, and the soon-to-be-released Coliseum.